video you're watching was shot earlier this year at Cesar Chavez School in East Salinas. It was a workshop specifically designed for nine-year-olds or fourth graders in order to introduce them to the vibrant being workshop, which uses the ball as the key to the theater of the sphere. Here's a little girl. Look at that, see? That's just newspaper. That's just paper. So anybody can do this, you know? Here you go. Here you are. These are puppets that we, uh, we use in little puppet plays that we put on. You know how Halloween masks come and they're plastic, and you can see? This started out as a plastic Halloween mask. You see that? This also is a paper mache mask that we use in our Christmas shows. Now, we'll be playing with these a little bit later, but I wanted you to see how one of the secrets that I learned when I was six years old in school turned into stuff that I can still use. Let's sit around the, uh, the circle again. something to show you. But what did you do to my bag? That's what I want to show you. Come here, Louis. Do you know what's in this bowl, Louis? My bag. Well, yes, it was your bag. But now it's something called paper mache. Do you know what I'm making with this paper mache? A mask. I want to do is I want to finish the story because the movie, the little movie only goes so far and what the teacher was doing was she was making a monkey mask like you saw in the little movie. She was making a monkey mask because it was going to be a Christmas play and the whole school was involved. Everybody from the first grade to the eighth grade, the school band and they needed two first graders to play uh, monkeys. And so that was the first time I ever tried out for a role, and I got one of the monkey roles. 
and I got a costume that was better than my own clothes. Because we were migrant farm workers, you know, we were on the road, we were picking cotton. They used to pick cotton by hand then, and so we, the whole family was out there working. And so I was really excited to be in this play. And we were living in a big farm labor camp in the San Joaquin Valley. And what happened is that uh, the cotton season was over and we were still in the camp because my dad's truck had broken down and he had it up on blocks and he was trying to fix it. So my mother said to my brother and me, go to school. So we got on the bus and went to school. And that's how I got involved in this play. But what happened is that a week before we actually did the play at Christmas, we were evicted from the labor camp. And I was never in the play. So what that did is that left a big hole about this size in my chest. I was really hurting. I don't know if you ever had disappointments in your life, but that was probably my biggest disappointment up until the time that I was six years old. So I had this big hole in my soul. Do you know what I did? I started play acting with my friends and I started putting on plays. I started making paper mache puppets. And then when my friends didn't know what to say, I started writing out lines for them on paper with freehand. And that's how I became a playwright. Okay, so this ball, this represents not just a hole, the hole that I had in my soul, but also a ball. And what we're going to be working with here are some balls so you can show how, how your body works. Everybody get a ball. Grab, ball! grab ball, The use of the ball introduces students to the acting techniques of the octo through the litany of the ball. The octo breaks down into five different letters and each of them carries a specific meaning. A is for activate the spine, C is for cultivate the heart, T is for teach to learn, O is for open the mind, and S is for serve the planet. Together they spell actos, which means acts, the short plays that we mean to produce with these students. You know why we're starting with a ball? Because this is the key, this is the key to the way that you work. This is the way your body works. This is the key. You think you're up and down like this? But you actually are a lot more like this. You're a lot more like this ball. And we're going to show you how that works. Because we're going to do some theater here. And I need you to think in terms of the ball. Through the litany of the ball, we explore the different uses of the limbs in the different parts of the body. To begin with, we start with the egg by sitting on the ball and discovering then the serpent or the spine. Now, has anybody had any back problems here? You're too young to have back problems, right? You shouldn't have any back problems. Okay. Uh, but here's what I want you to do. Watch this. You ready? Okay, just roll back on your back. Go on. Just roll, roll. Roll on your back, that's it. Roll. That's it, roll, that's it. Just get up into the shoulders there. Roll, roll, roll. After the spine, we move to the legs and the muscles of the thighs and the muscles of the ankles. And we call this exercise the jaguar. That's it. Very good, you're doing great. Go ahead, keep going. Shift that weight from side to side and bend at the knees. Okay, very slow, real slow. That's it. Very good, very good. Well, you guys are a lot better than some of the people I've worked with. As the pelvis rotates, we discover the key to the universal movement of the human body, what we call the U-joint. This is the hurricane. Okay? Or the washing machine, either way. Keep moving, keep moving. The use of the arms introduces the exercise we call the eagle. By moving the arms as if they were wings and then circulating them, we discover the rotary motions of the joints in the shoulders, 
the elbows and the wrists. Then what happened is that you learn how to do it. See, if there's one hand. One, two, two. <laughs> In order to emphasize the importance of the small of the back as the center of the rotary movement of the body, we have an exercise called the Eagle's Nest. By placing the ball at the small of the back, the student is able to explore how steady their movements are. I want you to find the small of your back because it's like trying to look for the middle of this ball. Where is the center of this ball? Where is the center of you? Like the center here of this circle? How do you find it? How do you find it in your body? Well, you go about halfway through. See that? That's the small of my back, right? And the way I know I'm there is by balancing it there, see? It didn't work. Here we go. Arch your back. Bring your shoulders up. Try it again. Here we go. Do this. See? Like this. Can you do this? Here. Can you do this? Can you arch your back this way? Without the ball. Can you do this? Can you do this and do this? Okay. Yeah. Just do that. So that. All right, now, now you really arch. Now bend, bend at the waist and find that spot again. Bend your knees. Yeah, bend your knees. It's really important that you bend your knees. That's it. The culminating exercise of the use of the ball is what we call the feathered serpent. And this consists of getting every student balanced with their feet on top of the soccer ball. This motivates the student to use every muscle in their body in order to stay aloft. This is an exercise that allows the student to develop balance and also a sense of sensitivity in their feet that they will need in order to be able to appreciate their presence on stage. We can only do this with help and with a spotter. Okay, so don't try this by yourselves. Very good. All right. Very good. She looks great. Yeah. Look, look up. Look up at Sylvia. Arch the back. Arch the back. Get the head up. There you go. There you go. Combined, all of these exercises are what we call the litany of the ball. From the egg, to the serpent, to the jaguar, to the hurricane, to the eagle's nest, to the eagle, to the feathered serpent. We have an exercise called the pyramid which consists of the use of the ball and also some poles or a stick like this pen. What this introduces is the relationship between a horizontal straight line and the zero or the O or the circle. The combination of straight lines and circles and the ball gives us an exercise we call the pyramid because the challenge is for the students to be able to create a pyramid by working together to lift the ball and sustain it up in the air. Okay, lift, lift, lift. Good job, good job. Good. Slowly. Come on, Janet. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Come on, come on, come on. Lift it up, lift it up, keep going, keep going. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Good, good, good. Go, 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 go. So we're going to stomp our way to the middle, and what we're going to do is send this energy into this room to thank the spirits for being kind and letting us work out here this morning. So, are we ready? Let's start stomping. Ha, 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 ha,
That's it. We learned a lot of things. We learned um, how to do those exercises that he showed us. All the stuff he was doing with the, the, movement. the movement with the soccer ball, I thought was really good. I think my favorite one is when we use the ball we, and then we twisted it and then we tried going over in our head and put it right back. back the back. eagle thing. Yeah, yeah. The eagle's nest. Yeah, the eagle's nest. I think it's wonderful to have the kids manipulating their bodies and getting to know what they're doing and having the arts when we don't have very much time for it. So it, it's really nice to watch. Well, we don't really do any more activities. This is like our one chance that we can actually do something. Oh, I think it's great watching the kids. I like to have um, the teamwork that they have to work together and try to coordinate their thoughts and body at the same time. I really enjoy the exercises and um, trying to pick up the box with the sticks. With these types of things, it would be really good because it is a 20-minute activity that you could incorporate. So I think it's really good. I was um, nervous when I got there, when I got there. And a little by little, I was not nervous. And that's all. That's great. Thank you so much. A major point of this workshop for nine-year-olds and students that are either younger or older is that the whole process of learning begins in the human body. Without utilizing the mobile qualities of the arms and the legs and especially the spine, you don't have a consistent and fluid learning process in any student. What this focuses on is the use of the central nervous system, literally the spine, to communicate signals from the ground, from the very feet, from the very sensitive and uh, sensual nerve endings of the human body, straight up the spine into the base of the neck, into the medulla oblongata, and then up into the higher regions of the brain. To provide a learning experience through physical movement is to lay the foundation for other kinds of learning in the classroom. The use of theater exercises, sports, dance, music, any kind of physical movement enhances the learning process. On the contrary, the use of just a chair or sitting students on a, at a desk really inhibits the learning process because it blocks the spine. The philosophy behind this theatrical exercise is really a response to the human nature that we all have that is rotary, that is mobile, and that is active and vibrant. We call it the vibrant being workshop because movement is the vibrancy of the human body, but it is also the key to human learning. This is the way we write zero. And it looks like zero is nothing. But actually zero is the basis of all the mathematics. Today when we run our computers, Computers run on the basis of zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. Does this remind you of anything? We work today with a ball, and we work with a stick. A ball and a stick, or a stick. We're working with the two primary symbols of mathematics. Because there's mathematics, there's numbers in everything that you do. The use of the ball also introduces students to the power of zero, which is the key to understanding mathematics. The key is that zero is not just a flat two-dimensional circle written on a flat surface. Zero is a three-dimensional concept like this ball. So in utilizing the ball, the students are exploring the mathematical qualities of their movements. The body is always calculating. Certain movements to the left, certain movements to the right. Actors learn to balance and learn to keep time with their feet and with their legs in order to be able to dance or be able to cross the stage. It is all an exploration of mathematics in three-dimensional space. The acting exercises have to do with the cultivation of the heart. You cultivate the heart by exploring the sentient, emotional qualities of the human being. Students learn this by learning how to laugh and how to cry. The key, interestingly enough, is inherent in the pure vowels. Shall we laugh or not? Look at me. 
Departing from the use of the vowels, we also get into spoken language. The two most basic words of the human language are yes and no. So then, we introduce the yes-no exercise, qualified by a third point, which is maybe so. What this explores is the constant battle between negative and positive forces in the physical and emotional and intellectual world as it translates into human interaction in in terms of the everyday events of everyone's daily life. We all love and we all hate. We love actually with qualifications and we hate with qualifications. By improvising around these two terms, I love you, I hate you, students are able to explore the complexity of expressing their emotional state of being and in their friendships, in their love relationships, in their daily life, in their family relationships. And so this exercise is really an exploration of the interior qualities of each student, allowing them to give free range to their emotions without committing themselves in any personal or injurious way because it is really play. It is playtime. But at the same time, they are learning the subtleties of their emotional expression. Hola. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Juanito. Juanito. Nice to meet you, Juanito. <laughs> These puppets, like dolls the world over, are alter egos for the children. They're like masks. They allow the students to express and explore feelings that they can't approach directly because sometimes they're too painful or too personal. But here, through the use of puppets, we learn not just what the students are thinking, but the students themselves learn how they can relate to this use of this alter ego, which is this paper mache figure. It is play acting at the highest level. As an art form, some of the most sophisticated forms of human expression occur in the puppet traditions of the world. In this case, we use puppets because it's just one more avenue through the vibrant being to explore the nature of the student and their vibrant being. Okay, what if he's a student, she's a teacher, and he's the parent here, okay? What is the teacher saying to Juanito's father here? I mean, what's the teacher saying? Good, go ahead. Good, that's good. Go on. Scary on the children. <laughs> is this true? Is this true what you're saying? What your teacher is saying? Okay, I'll tell you what. All right, you get the idea, right? Is that if if uh, if you talk about things that that are happening to you, like school or your family life or something that you're willing to talk about, you can make stories happen. What we want you to do is to work up some little acto. Okay? Actos are short plays. So remember what the initials stand for. Activate the spine, cultivate the heart, teach to learn, open the mind, serve the planet. We encourage the students to come together collectively to improvise and create their own stories based on their own experiences and their own observations. The use of signs indicate the character so that we don't have to waste any time in writing exposition. It is a complete and direct method of explaining who the character is. It is also, in a way, a mask and also a costume. The children that you see in this video participated for a couple of hours after lunch to create their own pieces. And they were able to come up with four different actos that reflected their observations of the day. It was uh, a marvelous experience of improvisation, utilizing the different body techniques that we introduced during the day. And it illustrates what is possible, even with very limited time and very limited means, to do with students through the use of live theater experiences. It is an illustration of the power of the Vibrant Being Workshop in the school, in the classroom, 
with nine-year-olds and fourth graders and their exploration of their world through their own imaginations and their bodies, cultivating their hearts and opening their minds. You have to know what, uh, in here from Salinas, California, we have a girl. Oh, a popular girl. Yeah, that's popular. good. Popular girl. I'll be from the valley. Like, really? I look cute in my new hat. Now we have to have, like, a hero. A school? A school teacher? <laughs> the big teacher has a nice smile. And it's interesting how true some of the, the things are. That's what we keep laughing at is that it's things that they've already experienced, at least with the group that we're working with. So, it's funny. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Grand Slamming Animals. One, two, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if we never get back. But it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes you're out. Okay, let's welcome all the contestants back 
Now we're gonna hear from the judges. The judges bring out your cards and let's see who does the best. I'm bored. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> sure. They're all so wonderful. <laughs> well, well, there's only to be one person could win here, and I'm gonna choose the best person is me. <laughs> Humor is always great. Little Red Riding Hood and Three Ninja Bears. <laughs> Take it away! Ladies and gentlemen, we'll proudly present a marvelous story of fairy tale end. I promise we'll bite you, but instead of my cast, so we'll be your ride to the rest of the guys. <laughs> Fairy tales are something that everybody knows, and you can always rework fairy tales to make a point. So I think this was uh, this was a very uh, interesting octo because of that, because that's a whole area, you know, where fairy tales. The other two is uh, is the it had a, a, a definite beginning, an introduction, and it had an end, you know, even with a curtain call. So all of that was real good, you know. Endings and ed exits are real important. First impressions, last impressions, you know, you got to rework that. Doesn't take a lot, but uh, it takes a, just a little thought sometimes to make the whole thing work better. So it's all rounded up. Did you see the new video that came out yesterday? Yeah, it was so cool. Did you see the backflip that they did? Yeah. I only watched it to, until there because the main teacher called my mom and told her that I was being mean to people, so she grounded me. Hi, what are you girls talking about? What do you care? You're not popular. No! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Hi, what are you doing? I'm their friend. But you're my friend. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, once again, uh, on behalf of all my colleagues, you know, I want to thank you uh, for a wonderful day. Uh, we've learned a lot. I hope that you've learned a lot. To teach is to learn. That's another one of our uh, basic beliefs. And uh, I'm never uh, surprised, you know, that uh, you can learn from each other. And I've learned a lot from you. It's real important to be nine years old. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I hope that you can continue being as... Uh, 
passionate as you are, you know, with the school work as you are with this workshop. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we hope that we can go from here. In order to do that, let's leave some energy. So that's what the stomp is about. We stomp and we stomp our way to the middle and we leave our vibration here for the school and for all the students that uh, have their meals here and come to study here so that uh, their life may be uh, as creative as this afternoon, as today has been for us. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Thank you again. Vamos. Vamos. Teatro Campesino has been based in San Juan Bautista since 1971. So Monterey County, San Benito County, Santa Cruz, and the southern part of Santa Clara County are essentially our home base. From here, from our theater in San Juan Bautista, we have been performing in this area for 36 years. The history of the teatro goes back 42 years, however, with our beginnings and our roots in the Delano Grape Strike led by Cesar Chavez. We began by teaching farm workers. Our mission has been to help farm workers, to expose them to the wonder and the life-giving qualities of music and dance and theater, to counterset and offset the more brutalizing aspects of farm labor in the fields. However, we've discovered that what we have to give to farm workers can also be given to everyone. So there are no limits to what we do. We're a multicultural, multiracial group we believe in America as a place that should reflect the faces of humanity. But we are specifically dedicated to helping the young discover their own potential. We hope that in the future we're able to send interns into the schools to help bring creativity into the lives of students throughout the four county area and beyond. May we all work together to make the earth a better place to live for all of us. It's a true honor to have the entire team of Teatro Campesino here, Mr. Valdez. Uh, it means a lot, not only to Cesar Chavez, to the community as a symbol that uh, he's willing to come back to the community and uh, give of himself and teach our students about the, the richness of art, especially drama. And so we hope that it's a spark and it's, uh, it's a light that we can continue uh, across our schools. And I know we're all excited, we're very motivated. And uh, we hope for the future and to continue to work with him in the future. So thank you very much on behalf of Cesar Chavez, the students, the staff, and the Alisal District, Mr. Pulido, our superintendent. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.